there is an entire scene in which I talk about why exactly uh, a piece of work about transformation is the most important work of 20th century uh, literature. And goes to a class, uh, which by the way, John Lahr actually wrote another beautiful piece about uh, speaking across the divide. And I take the entire piece, and again, this is part of the collage of the novel. I took bits and pieces of that, and I actually inserted Anne into the article, fictional character, into this nonfiction article. The piece is about a, uh, a class at Juilliard, which is fascinating. It actually teaches kids from bad neighborhoods, disadvantaged neighborhoods, to speak in standard English, to present themselves. And so Anne talks about that, and she talks to her book club about this, because the question has been asked. And she said, the way that we change, the way that we transmogrify, this is certainly the American story. Um, it has become the story of the world because right now we really are interested in the ways in which societies change and cultures change and values change. You or someone like you is fundamentally uh, interested in this idea of the change of our concept of who we are and the change back. She therefore says that the most important work in 20th century literature is Pygmalion by George Bernard Shaw. It is the most brilliant literary piece about the capacity for change, the ability to become another person, and yet remain yourself. Change is quite important. Uh, as a matter of fact, it, it may be the most fundamentally important thing in life. It is also the most fundamentally important thing in characters and literature. And I was on a, 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 a cruise, actually, on a, on a cruise ship um, in the South Pacific, and I met a wonderful um, older Jewish couple from, uh, from Washington, D.C., and we were talking about um, we were talking about it, they were very culturally Jewish in this sort of thing, although not religious at all, not, not, not observant, but culturally extremely Jewish, and that had been their background, this sort of thing. Their grandson was marrying a black woman. And I said to them, given uh, the way in which they were, the, the way they identified as Jewish and this sort of thing, and they're just a way of talking, I said, does, that, does this bother you? And they had a very interesting reaction. The woman who said to me, she said, why would it bother us? And I said, well, there's you know, an idea that you have to, to, to keep Jewish values, keep alive Jewish culture. And she said this sort of thing. She said, she said, culture is malleable. That is the point of culture. She said, this woman my son is marrying is absolutely wonderful. Never in a million years would I not want him to marry this person. She is a wonderful person. Why, why would I ever want to have to, in conserving a tradition, ban a particular human being or a group of human beings who I love, who I value. The world has evolved. We have evolved in thinking. I value Judaism, she said. Fundamentally, it is a, it is a wonderful culture. It has brought wonderful things to human existence, progressive thought and art and aesthetics and, and wealth creation, just, just fabulous uh, values. And she said, but History changes, and we change as human beings. And there is a point at which, she said this very carefully, there is a point at which cultures come to the end of their evolutionary usefulness. I thought that was a very wise and very uh, beautiful way of expressing this idea.